Chris Christie joins the presidential race, and we can already see his campaign strategy taking shape. Spoiler alert, it's got a few surprises. Then President Obama seeing a big bump in the polls after his big week filled with big victories. Might be a bit premature to call the president a lame duck. Also, the Supreme Court's rulings on Obamacare and gay marriage are getting all the attention, and understandably so, but we're going to dive into another high court decision that also has a huge impact in our area. Good evening and welcome to RFL. I'm Andrew Whitman in tonight for Richard French, and tonight it is official. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie is in. We need to have strength and decision-making and authority back in the Oval Office, and that is why today I am proud to announce my candidacy for the Republican nomination for President of the United States of America. Governor making the announcement in a town hall format at his old high school in Livingston. He spent the first several minutes of his speech telling his personal story, and he tried to come across as a kinder and gentler Chris Christie. One of the things my mother always used to say all the time to me was, Christopher, if you work hard enough, you can be anything. Think about how amazing this country is. That one generation removed from the guy who was working on the floor of the plant, of the Briars ice cream plant, his son is the two-term governor of the state where he was born and raised. Later, Christie pivoted to his record in New Jersey. We've balanced six budgets in a row. We've refused to raise taxes on the people of this state for six years. We made the hard decisions that had to be made to improve our education system. We reformed tenure for the first time in 105 years. We made the difficult decisions to reform pensions and health benefits and continue that fight today. The last six years, we've proved not only can you govern this state, you can lead it to a better day, and that's what we've done together. Now, a short time ago, I spoke to Alfred Doblin about Christie's history running New Jersey and much more. Doblin is the editorial page editor of The Record in New Jersey. Alfred, the New Jersey miracle appears to be back, or at least it was in today's speech. We hadn't heard much from uh, about that since the 2012 Republican convention and the 2013 re-election campaign. 30% uh, approval rating in New Jersey would seem to indicate that a lot of voters don't agree with Christie's take on the New Jersey miracle. Yeah, I think that's that's accurate, but but the governor does not need to win New Jersey to win the presidency. So I, I think, you know, I think he's sort of written New Jersey off. New Jersey has done what it needed to do. It elected him twice, and now he's looking to New Hampshire, he's looking to Iowa, uh, but he's, he's not looking to Patterson or Paramus or Piscataway. But fact-check that claim from the governor for me, if you would, because he's saying... I've turned around New Jersey's economy. A lot of people would argue that he hasn't. Which view is closer to actual New Jersey, Christie's or that 30% approval ratings? Well, you know, it's probably a little in between both. I mean, I think the 30% is more a reflection that he's just not in the state. So I think people are angry that the economy is lagging compared to other states. So, I mean, the, there isn't this great Jersey comeback that he wants to talk about or this Jersey miracle is not happening. But I think the numbers are reflective of the frustration that New Jersey people have with the governor being out of state for so much time. I mean, he's really checked out after the election in 2013 to start, you know, campaigning for Republican governors in 2014. And I think they want him they want him or whoever is the governor to actually be the governor. And about that New Jersey comeback, the disputed one, how, how much, if it didn't happen, how much of that is on Governor Christie in your mind? How much of that is just on economic forces impacting the state? Well, it's, it's, it, it's probably, a, you know, a bit of both. I mean, I can, you know, if you argue the Christie position about Sandy recovery is not complete, he could say, well, look at what happened after other natural disasters around the country. You know, too much money flowed out too quickly. There was a lot of graft. There was a lot of misuse of funds. Um, but I think he's been uh, too slow in getting help to everybody it, with regards to Sandy. Um, there's been no investment in, in something to be a trans-Hudson rail tunnel. I mean, whether that project that he canceled the ARC was good or bad, it would have created a lot of construction jobs. Um, and that didn't happen. Um, I don't think people feel he's been as aggressive as he should be. His administration has been as aggressive as it needs to do to actually bring a new business to New Jersey or retain large companies like Mercedes that, left, uh, that, is, you know, that is leaving uh, North Jersey. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to move one Jersey corporation from one place in the state to another. So I, I think he, he gets more blame than just the economy. Governor Christie today also touted himself as the cure-all for partisanship in D.C. And he said, look at my experience in Trenton, getting a lot of things done with bipartisan support. 
How much was he able to get done? And he certainly did with bipartisan support, at least in his first term. Is that continuing? Does he still have that bipartisan support? How much of that was just his political capital at the time? Well, you know, the bipartisan support, even from the beginning, is a little bit deceptive because there were Democrats, including State Senate President Stephen Sweeney, who actually wanted a certain amount of reform in terms of public employees. So he wasn't grabbing at something that, that Democrats didn't want to necessarily approach, or at least certain key Democrats didn't want to approach. Um, whatever love there was, it's over. You know, I mean, this marriage is just done, toast, gone. Um, the, the governor's inability to make the payments he agreed to in a law that he, you know, advocated and signed um, has, I think, really killed that kind of love between, certainly between Sweeney and Christie, and also because Democrats now are, now are looking at 2017 and they need to start distancing themselves. So there's not a lot of goodwill there. Um, I think. The, the tenure issue, that he got some real reforms in terms of teacher tenure, I'll give him that. I think that was a genuine piece of progress. Um, something he doesn't tout, you know, but the drug court I uh, initiatives, I think, have been very strong and have gained him some uh, love from Democrats. Um, he lost a lot of that love, though, with Latino voters that he, he courted in 2013, and then he's now pushed them aside because now he has a different view about immigration because that view of immigration that he had isn't going to sell in the Midwest mm. or in the South. Alfred, just a couple of points. As somebody who's watched Christie as intently as anybody else, when the governor today is his tagline for his campaign says, tell it like it is, does he? He tells it like he sees it. That's so it's, it, it, if you, it, he tells it like it is in his reality. And then, what, to continuing to fact check to a degree, he says, I say what I mean and I mean what I say, which essentially means trust me. Do you think New Jersey voters trust Christie? Should primary voters trust Christie? Do you trust Governor Christie? Well, you know, I think primary voters have to make their own decisions. You know, there's every state's got a different agenda. So I don't, I don't feel it's my place to say who people should vote for or not vote for or trust or not trust. Um, you know, I used to be much more of a fan of the governor's. Now, uh, now I take him with, you know, several grains of salt. Uh, so I, I think voters should be skeptical about some of what he says, uh, but I don't think it's my place to tell people you should or you should not trust this man. Fair enough, and we'll leave it there. Alfred Doblin, editorial page editor at The Record. Alfred, thank you so much. Thank you. Primary day still a long way away, so tonight we want to get you involved in the conversation right now. Head over to Facebook and Twitter and sound off on our question today. Do you think Chris Christie has a chance to win the Republican nomination? Up next, our political panel will weigh in on Christie's big announcement, and they'll answer that same question, whether they think he stands a chance.